this goes back. Okay, so I am of the belief, and maybe I'm wrong here. I am of the belief that Matt Milano is a product of, the Matt Milano pick is a product of Doug Whaley and not a product of Sean McDermott's ability to figure out what to do with linebackers. And, and I have a reason for that. Well, his staff did the review prior to that draft. Right? Exactly. That was Whaley's staff. It wasn't McDermott. It had nothing to do with, with the scouting department at that point. Right. So it was, it was Whaley's staff. Didn't, you said he was hired in January, right? Right. And then. And Whaley was still here. Yes. So they, they wouldn't have flipped scouting departments till after. Which they till, did. Till after the draft, which they did. They did after the draft flip scouting departments. Yes. Well, I'm saying it's when like, they but hired, you're talking about the amount of input that McDermott would have had in three months. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Matt Milano, I really believe is a Whaley pick. That's just the way that he was a Whaley pick. So that's where I am with that. Is Trey? Trey's also a Whaley pick. Yeah. They're all Whaley picks, you're saying. Dawkins. Mm-hmm. Two, yep. two out of those three have been extended. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm just... Okay. So here's where we are, right? Since drafting Matt Milano, how successful have the Bills been at the linebacker? Would you call Tremaine Edmonds a success? I would call him a success. Okay. A work in progress, but a success. When Trey or Milano go out, how have you felt about the depth at linebacker on this team? Terrified. Okay. So, you're with me here. Yes. Okay. There have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten linebackers added in 2017. Uh, Just one, in 2017? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in 2018. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in 2019. How many in 2020? How many linebackers did they add to the roster? Six. Four. Okay. Here are the names of the guys that you add in in 2019. And then Is this another major league reference? No, 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 no. Well, no, maybe a little guy. bit. Maybe a little bit. Mitchell Freeman? Eli Har- Eli Harold. Okay. Boshan Joseph, Terrell well, you're Dotson. calling Harold a linebacker. Harold, I mean, he was signed as a he was linebacker. A DN, dude. He's, he signed as a linebacker. I'm sorry, I was mimicking the comments. Okay, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, Eli Harold, Boshan Joseph, Tyrell Dodson, Jawan Foggy, Sam Acho, Jeff Holland, Nate Hall, Curtis Atkins, and Delshawn Phillips. How many of those names sound familiar? A few, actually. We <laughs> talked couple, about a lot of them. A couple. We right? have a few episodes that are right. those guys. Now your 2020 linebackers. AJ Klein, Tyler Mikhevich, Andre Smith, Duran Lee. End of list. Duran Lee is <laughs> sneaky, though. Duran Lee is a sneaky pick. But there's a very big difference between what you were trying to find in 2018 and 2019 and what you did in 2020. Huge difference, right? Yes. Yeah. And that tells me you got to look at that as one of two ways. One, they really did sign AJ Klein just in case they couldn't re sign Matt Milano and they're like, this will just have to do. This, yeah. Right. Two is that they only brought in veterans in 2020. That was it. Tyler McCavich is primarily a special teams guy. AJ Klein has special teams, but also has, you know, fair, a fair amount of linebacker experience yes, at McDermott. Yeah. Andre Smith was a, a veteran, you know, he's yep. a three year veteran. Uh, and Duran Lee was former first round pick. Yes. Right? So they only brought in veterans and only four of them. Why? When you have Matt Milano walking into free agency, why do you only bring in four? veteran linebackers is it because you're confident in the fact that you could re-sign milano i look i see it the other way i look at it as you brought, you brought in, in guys you brought in you insurance know, policies you brought in guys that you know could play if you're unable to re-sign milano well that, no that that was the client pick the other three names are irrelevant that was the client signing them. you signed them for three years because then it gave you a, a two-year window if you're not able to sign milano Here's how. Here's what it did. You signed him for three years, right? Mm-hmm. Let me try to, so I can map this out. You signed him for three years. So the first year that he's playing is Milano's last year if he right. doesn't able to resign. Yep. Then you have a second year where if you're not able to sign Milano, that happens a month before the draft. Mm-hmm. Then you have to figure out whether or not you're drafting another guy right. to play under or next to Klein to mm-hmm. learn the system. Right. Then his third year, that you guy's second goodbye. year, yeah. you, you can say goodbye to Klein with his, with his deal. So I do, 
I do feel like the volume of linebackers yes. that they brought in over and over and over again is scary to me. Right? Mm. It's just like Delshawn Phillips was the guy that made the roster. They cut him. Yeah. You know, like Terrell Dodson it looked <clears throat> fine for a game, but I, I mean, it, it just seems like they've had struggles mm-hmm. finding depth at that position. And they just always have. Right. Oh, so, yeah. so the whole, we can replace Matt Milano thing. I'm not, I don't, I, I think that well's a little bit drier than we want to give it credit because Milano was brought in by Whaley, not McDermott. I'm being grabbed Edmonds, but mm-hmm. I mean, Edmonds is an athletic freak, right? Outside of that, it's a, it's a desert. I mean, it's a desert. So are you drafting again? Cause I don't know if, how confident know. are how confident are you in Edmonds? On a scale of one to ten, yes. To pro- okay, let me qualify again. To produce at this level next year, or higher, or higher, six. Okay, so a kid that came into the league at nineteen, he's going to be in his fourth year. Mm-hmm. For the argument's sake, I will say he's playing out of position. For argument's sake. No, because I was going to say, this guy was a, I'm going to rush the passer from the outside linebacker at Virginia Tech. He right. wasn't just mainly an inside guy. And we've he was seen running, him in coverage. And we've seen, we've seen him in coverage. My point is this. He had to learn the middle linebacker position. Okay? In a 4-3. That how McDermott and Frazier wanted it played, he had to learn that. So there was a learning curve for him. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he was a middle linebacker. In college. It wasn't like he was a Luke Keekley from Boston College coming in to play middle linebacker. Again, same position. Edmonds played more outside than mm-hmm. inside. So if you chart his progression of an uh, coming in as an outside linebacker, playing inside, his progression from year one to year three, that is a bean pick. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're confident – in Bean's ability to find a freak to play next to Edmonds, then you're good. Then I think that's where people are coming from. Well, Bean drafted Edmonds, and they brought in a bunch of veterans to kind of support that. Mm-hmm. That's fine. So if if you wanted to compare the two, Whaley's pick was a fifth rounder out of Boston College. Mm-hmm. Bean's pick was a first rounder out of Virginia Tech. Okay. So do you think that they go, okay, He's going to test the market. We're not going to be able to afford him. But we're eyeing up a couple of these guys from here or here. We may take him in the third or fourth. I, I'll gonna, tell you right now, if they trade back from 30 and they pick up another third third rounder this year, hmm. that's your linebacker. They will use that on a line, one of those two on a linebacker. So here's, here's where I kind of sit with this. Looking at 2019 and 2020, the Bills have had 15 draft picks. Ten of them were underclassmen. Ten. Okay. Ten of the fifteen. The only people that were not for were not underclassmen: Devin Singletary, um, Dane Jackson, Tyler Bass, Zach Moss, Cody Ford. Those are the only non-underclassmen. Everybody else that they've picked in 2019 and 2020 was an underclassman. So two and running you, wait, you you two running backs, mm-hmm. practice squad corner. Mm-hmm. You, who you thought was oh, your right tackle? Play out of position and your kicker. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Oh, so you're with me on that, right? So the odds that Buffalo drafts an underclassman linebacker to replace Milano, I am not okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you're not in okay love with, with that. It. Well, especially at 30. Like, what kind of linebacker are you going to get 30? You're going to, you could get a really, really good inside linebacker at 30. Well, stop. You're not getting, stop. You're not getting a good outside linebacker. Well, let's 30. qualify. We got to qualify this because there's a new position that was invented. <laughs> there's an edge rusher now. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Paul, it makes sense because there's going to be some outside linebackers that are going to be converted to edge rushers. You remember Vic Beasley? Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> Bruce Irvin is a free agent. Does, let, does Bruce uh, Irvin change? Uh, tell me Bruce Irvin doesn't change the complexity of this defense. Oh, he, you know he's just going to blitz the whole time. You know he's not going to cover uh, anybody. What? You need somebody who can cover somebody. Well, yeah, but you're not going to be drafting him at 30, man. You can find a quality outside linebacker at 30, especially one that's a raw freak. I, I, I mean, I disagree. Because Edmonds will 
<laughs> be with Edmonds. I disagree, man. You just you look at the fall off in the last couple drafts from. Are you confident top 20 in getting to twenty to forty in the linebacker? Would you be comfortable if they traded back from thirty, picked up an extra third, and used that pick on a linebacker? Because I think that's what'll happen. I think that's more realistic. Are you confident in a third round linebacker? There's, it's not as because you know they did their research. You're saying mm, it's not just a flash in the pan guy. No, 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 no. It's not that. If you're putting a first round pick on a guy, they have to start. Do you know they why they have to start? Do you, do you, do you know why not a lot of linebackers are drafted in the first round, Paul? I would love to know why you say that. Is it a big deal to have a fifth year option on a linebacker? The guy gets hit in the head a thousand times before his second contract. <laughs> That's a valid point. Does the fifth year really matter at that That's point? That's a valid point. My, my whole thought process here, Mar, is I think we need to be a bit more concerned about losing Milano because of the challenge it will be to replace him, not replicate him. To replace that position. And Thank been, you for saying trying, that, by the way. They've been trying for a long time to find another linebacker. And Milano and Edmonds have been hurt enough to give them their other linebackers opportunity to play. I don't and I'm not it. comfortable with any of them. I'm not drafting a linebacker to replace Matt Milano if I lose him. Right. I'm not drafting a linebacker. Okay. I'm drafting a safety to replace Matt Milano. Why don't you just trade the third round pick for Kyle Duggar and just be done with it? Just, I would have. <laughs> I know you would have. I know Kyle you Duggar would. next to next to Edmonds. Would you tell me right now that if in this defense, in this defense, you they play mostly nickel, right? Yep. Okay. With the thirtieth pick, you take CB two. Hey, you, they could find corners. They they can. They could find Trey corners. Was fourth corner off the board. If you get a third plus fifth round pick. Fifth round options on corners are, are used quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. You pick a CB2. You know, because I mean, this is the chicken or the egg. Because people yeah. are going to be like, oh, you need an edge rusher. Oh, you need a corner. Well, if one works, then the other one doesn't have to work as hard. Right. It puts pressure on the quarterback faster. Ball gets out of his hands. You don't have to cover as long. However, if you don't have the guy rushing and getting there, you have a CB2 that's across from a CB1. They're both CB1s. You see what Miami's doing. You kind of get my point here. Mm-hmm. Point being is this. If I'm the Buffalo Bills, I'm at 30, an option is to draft a CB2 at 30 and bring in, in, the, in your second round, you bring in a safety. That's about 6'1", 2 and a quarter. So you drafted Sierra Neal again? Is that what you're telling me? You drafted Sierra Neal again? What's wrong with Sierra Neal at this point anyway? <laughs> nothing. Love Sierra Neal. Really My point nothing. is this, is that I think with the ever-evolving NFL, we talked about it this week with the tight ends. They're not really tight ends anymore. They're huge wide receivers. Kelsey runs a whip route better than a slot guy. I you know, need someone to counter that. I know the traditionalists will say, but you can't stop the run when you're in nickel. And I Tell think that, that to Tyron Matthew, who stopped Hunt and um, a different animal. Nick Chubb. That's different. That's like saying, oh, don't tell me about Troy Palomalu. St- no, don't even <laughs> stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's Palomalu. It's Palomalu, man. Yeah, I... But traditionally speaking, yes. nickel's lighter than base 4-3. What if they drafted so, another Edmonds at 6-2? Well, it's still never cover a tight end. My point is this. Would you be happy with that? No. Okay, then you need somebody that can cover. Oh, God, here we go. So what you, am I missing? You, okay, so are you concerned with with finding a new linebacker to play the role that Matt Milano has played? Do you think they'll be able to find somebody who plays the role the way Milano does? I have more confidence in Frazier and McDermott than I think a lot of people do. What is what does Lee have in the tank? Duran Lee. Mm-hmm. What is? Uh, my, that's my point. It's like give me Duran Lee. You give want to talk Lee. about a veteran who's been in the league? He's mm-hmm. a pro. Mm-hmm. He needs to play well. Mm-hmm. You'll get the best football out of Duran Lee next year if you play him. I'm so excited. Milano. I'm so excited to see. I'm him just saying he may not play. But my point is this. If they were just picking guys off the scrap heap, you think he would have saw some time this year? Well, I look at it this way, right? This veteran free agent, this veteran practice squad, 
you talk about losing Brown. Mm -hmm. Isn't it great to already have stills in the building, teach them the culture, say, hey, listen, do you want to do this again next year? We'll give you an NFL contract instead of a practice squad contract. Then you can let John Brown go. Like this is, it's an audition time period. Like a lot of times guys will sign and they're like, I don't want to be here. This isn't what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. Well, you had those veteran practice squad spots. Well, guess what? That's what you use them for. You use them to say, hey, what about next year? You want to run this back next year? You want to come back and be a part of this? Because Stills now has to walk away from Buffalo. It's different. It's a bit. It is definitely different, different than, than being traded here. Right. You know what I mean? Because they didn't have a choice in the matter. Right. Or they may have. Who knows? But the, if you were traded to Buffalo, like, Diggs could have blown up. Mm-hmm. Like, that could have blown up in the Bills' face. Yep. It wasn't his choice, blah, blah, blah. Right. But then you see guys that, okay, I'm a free agent. I can sign anywhere I want. Mm-hmm. This team wants me here. That's a big deal as a player. Right. I'm still going to fight you. That's fine. We'll fight. You know, it's been a long time. I talked about these knuckles. Look at that. Look at that. It's like marbles in a sock. <laughs> I swear to God. It's going to take a pillowcase. You guys have not, for, for nine years I've known this man. He punched me a few times in those nine years. <laughs> it's like getting hit by Wolverine. <laughs> you have to cut me? Right? 